Hi everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to setting up for the first time as a beginner. Now, you've come across to the right channel. You've obviously been scratching your head. You're like, eh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how much to spend. What brush do I buy? What compressor do I buy? Do I need a compressor to start airbrushing? So get yourself comfortable. This is quite a long video, but I'm gonna talk you through budget end stuff up to high end stuff. Now this all goes on whether you're in this for the long haul or you're a hobbyist. If you want to get into the long haul on this, my first recommendation is get yourself on an airbrush class. That's how I started off. I seen an artist, I seen his work and I thought, oh, I'd like to get into this custom paint scene. It looks really cool. I'm not bad at drawing. I'll give it a go. I didn't buy any kit to start off with. Didn't even look at Amazon or eBay at the time. I just went for a class. And if you go for a class, you're then just tipping your toes into the industry and then you'll see him first hand. You've not got to buy any kit. You just pay a, a small amount of money to go on a class. They give you the tools to work with. They've got the compressor. And then you've got the guidance from someone telling you how to do it and what to do. Because there's nothing worse thinking that you want to start airbrushing. You just jump straight on Amazon and eBay, buy a kit, and then you haven't got a clue on what to do. And then you're scratching around YouTube, trying to find out what to do, how to work it, how to strip it down, paint's not flowing. You're in an absolute mess. So take a class first. I do do classes here, one-to-one, -one, and I can show you the cheap end of airbrushing. So you can have a go with these cheap things and then you're gonna realize and think, oh crikey, I'm glad I didn't go down that route and blow 80, 90 quid on a cheap setup. I'll put you through a setup where it's expensive so you can have a go with expensive brushes, intermediate brushes, a decent compressor, and then you'll get to realize how much better it is to learn to paint with quality tools than buying low-end budget tools because you will be struggling with them. So I'll leave my links in the description for my email. So if you want a one-to-one -one class and you are in the Essex area, prices are really reasonable, guys. I'm not going to rip you off because I know what it's like starting out airbrushing. Some of these classes can be four or five hundred pounds. You will not be paying that with me for the day. I guarantee it. So class first and foremost, then you can start looking at things to buy. Now, I'll show you the cheap end. We'll go through that now. And then I'll go through a more expensive range and you'll see that. And I'll go through options of setting up for your house, setting up for mobile and setting up for studio. So you'll get to see all these setups in today's video. So we're going to start off with the budget. Now, this is budget guys now the reason why i got this brush is to do a review on the channel i've always wanted to try one to see what they were like now when i got this and done the review if you look back on the channel there is a review on this and i sort of didn't completely diss it it works and i was looking at this the video doing the video for the beginners and saying yes this will get you airbrushing and it will, it will get you airbrushing. But after a while, it becomes frustrating. And the reasons why these are frustrating and you wanna throw it out your studio and smash it against a wall is, for one, they give you false run time. They say, this will run for 60 minutes. They don't, they don't run for 60 minutes at all but you probably barely get 20 minutes out of it then you've got to unplug it then you've got to ch a charger on it and wait up to sometimes say an hour to get fully charged and then you paint it for 20 minutes again and then you stop it and you're charging it up so that's a frustrating part is this piece the batteries ain't great great because you're running a little pump to pump the air up the next thing that will absolutely drive you insane is the cheap crappy brushes 
that come to the tops of these, especially this one. Now, how you work these if you've not seen one before, you basically turn it on on the bottom, you have a little power indicator on the bottom just there. It tells you your battery life. And then when you press the trigger down, you instantly get air. Now the air pressure on these is probably about 15 psi, probably a little bit less. Now, I've got water in this, so as you can see, that's how far back I'm having to dial the trigger to get a decent amount of paint out of this. And that's the second thing that annoys you with these. The triggers are horrendous. They really are. And if you are learning airbrushing, airbrushing is about trigger control and being able to feather the trigger and put minimal paint down. If you're learning with something like this, you are going to struggle because you're not getting that precision in that trigger that you need to learn. So it's sort of like a false way of learning with these type things. Yes, they will, they're cheap. I know we've not all got big pockets and loads of money to blow on this expensive gear. I didn't have when I first started. I don't just buy all this stuff. This is over a career of 15 to 16 years. You save up and you buy these little bits along the way. So it is an option. I wouldn't personally recommend it, this model anyway, but it will get your paint down at around 30 to 40 pounds. So that's the portable airbrush with the battery on. Now, the next option you can get is another portable one which is this one now as you can see we've got a hose on this one now i brought this one again to do a review because it was like new out so this one's a little bit more expensive i think this one came out about 55 pound now for 55 pound it's a better setup frustrating again because i'll tell you why but the bonus you get with this one is you get an airline with it and you can connect to a normal airbrush. So if you've got, say, a second-hand airbrush that you've picked up, say you've picked up an iWater that's a decent brush, you could buy one of these, clip your iWater to it, and you've, you're good to go. You've got a sort of good brush, but then it's downgrading again because you've got one of these. Now, the battery on this one states 60-minute runtime. It's not. I ran this the other day off camera doing a portrait and it lasted 20 minutes and it just completely just dead flat and then I had to charge it. Now the charge time on this is a bit quicker, about 25, 30 minutes and it's charged, but you're getting 20 minute run time. So you're painting for 20 minutes, then you're stopping, then you're waiting another 30 minutes, then you're painting again, then you're charging it for another 30 minutes. So it's it's not enjoyable and you want to be able to enjoy this this is what it's all about it's, it's got to be something you want to enjoy and having tools that restrict your enjoyment in doing something is a pain in the ass so yes it's a it's better than this one the brush with this is better than that brush as well the trigger response turn that one on a little bit more quiet but this is a better brush than the other one. And that's what I found with this setup when I did the review. I, I actually praised the brush on this because it was a better, more responsive trigger and a better brush. And you have a little Mac valve to the front as well. I've tried this brush on a normal airline and it works okay. So it's an okay brush. Battery lets you down, but you've got your bonus of the airline to adapt to your good brushes. So they're two budget setups now the next sort of budget setup that you are going to be inundated with when you go on ebay and you go on amazon is the one i'm going to pop up in the picture in the screen now now this is on amazon i typed in airbrush kit and this one popped up for 70 quid now when you're a beginner and you don't know about airbrushes compressors and things like that all you see is the £70 price tag and you think, wow, I'm getting a compressor, I'm getting an airbrush. Sometimes they throw paint in and you get this 
Really nice little package deal. There's all glitzy glitzy, loads of pictures of someone going, and there's like a portrait that they haven't painted, someone else has. But they really glam it up and it's just a sales pitch to, to sell this 70 quid piece of crap to you, like they do with these. The same sort of thing. They put all the fancy pictures up. You get all the five-star reviews that no one's really actually put up. They're probably just gimmicks and just post them up themselves. But it's all hype to sell it. Now, this seventy-pound kit that I've got up in the screen now. The compressors. I haven't got a clue what make they are. So, if you are you've just ordered one and think oh my god you're watching this video and thought shit what have i done i just ordered one of these and have to send it back you'll be getting a cheap brush with it so you're in the same ballpark as this again you're in this field and you're you'll be permanently in this field around that price mark you have to jump up the scale to about brush wise the hundred mark probably just a little bit below, unless you're getting second hand, which you can. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you're back into this sort of category when you're in the 70 pound mark with the one I've got in the screen now. Now these compressors, they will work. These kits will start you airbrushing and you'll be airbrushing with it. But I guarantee you the brush will pack up because probably you'll one day go to spray some solvent paint or put thinners through it and it will melt the o-rings in the front because a lot of these cheap brushes aren't solvent proof seals so they end up sort of like just melting and the brush will die then if the brush don't die the compressor will definitely die because anyone that is new to airbrushing you are keen you're eager and you want to paint everything and everything so you're running the nuts off this little compressor and this little tank that you get is like that big and when you're pumping out 25 psi out of one of these brushes that little compressor is glowing by the end of your session and it is red hot so if it don't blow up it will burn out because they don't last they're not sort of built to last they're not a good brand they won't stand the test of time so as i say you're in that same field of cheapness when you're looking at a 70 pound setup now what i'll do now is i will show you an expensive setup but then i'll show you where you can get this expensive setup for half the price like i did see you in a minute Right guys, I've got my portable compressor set up. Now, I picked up an Iwata. This is a, I think this is a Smart Jet. You get the Studio Jet, the Smart Jet. There's, there's quite a few. Now, the one I've got on here, these, the actual air tank on these is the tube that goes round and it's also a carry handle. You've got an airbrush holder on the top. You've got your air water trap regulator and you get the iwater two meter hose with it now these are coming out at 300 some are around 350 mark on these still to date on these now i've got this one off facebook sales i got the compressor and i got a iwater eclipse sbs side feed i got both items the person I got it off, she was a lady, she'd used it a couple of times and it was on Facebook sales for £150. Now I paid £150 for a £350 compressor and a £150 airbrush I got for £150. So you can get these expensive setups cheap. You've not got to go out and blow a grand to get set up. Don't rush into it. As I say, take your class first, tip your toes on a class and have a little feel, see if it's for you because it's not for everybody. Some people like, as you'll see with things like this, a lot of people buy all the buy all the gear and got and have got no idea. So they buy all the gear, they chuck paint in it, they don't know what they're doing. Oh, I'm bored of that. 
they pack, pack it all up and then they chuck it on Facebook sales. And then what you do is you go on your class, on your one-to-one, -one, spend a hundred pound on a class for a day, get into it, and then you look on Facebook sales and you pick up something like this. So you're getting a really good quality setup, cheap. Yes, it's second hand, but these things last because they've got a good brand behind them. All the little eyewater compressors are good guys, they really are. This one, as I say, picked up. I've done a big wall job on this and it was one I did on the channel where I painted a big tree on a wall. And the tree was minimum seven feet high, say eight feet wide. And this thing was running all day, not an issue at all. And it only got slightly warm and it was running consistently. So they're a great compressor brilliant for when you're in home or in your studio. This is mainly for me for mobile because I've got a studio set up which I'm going to talk you through next. But I want a compressor. Have a look on Facebook sales. They're on there. You get the big case ones. The I think they're like the Smartjet Pros. and I don't know so much on the names, but you'll see the ones where they've got the big tin bodies and some of them have got two airbrush connections in. Just have a look, have a little look round, check the prices out of the Iwata compressors online and then just nip over to marketplaces, things like um, you can get second hand ones on eBay, you can go on like things like Gumtree, just have a little browse around and you'll probably get yourself a cracking compressor at half the price. So I'll move back over to the table and I'll talk you through some other bits. Right, you've done your class, you've picked up your compressor hopefully you've got one second hand at a really good price you've got a little bit of money left and you're after a brush now i'm going to point you in the direction of three brands guys to look at and these three brands will last you along your career you'll have no dramas with them you'll be able to pick spare parts up for them nice and easy first one i'm going to point you in the direction of is the creos now i've Push this to a lot of my subscribers and I know a lot of people that have brought this commented back and they've gone what an amazing brush it's brilliant and they are they're brilliant brushes this is the PS 270 it's a 0 0.2 setup a quick buzz about the brush double action really nice trigger slopes to the front great chrome body comfortable in your hand with the slope back piece there you can dial in your trigger here to get your movement back. You've got a Mac valve to the front, which is an absolute bonus because you can dial your air pressure in when you're working. 0 0.2, gets down cracking detail, lid to the top, brilliant brush, enough said. So that's the Creos. I can point you into Harder and Steenbeck. Now, for me, I came from Harder and Steenbeck. I started my career off 15, 16 years ago with H&S and I've got two H&S's still. This one is the Evolution Silverline Solo, the FP, I think it's the FPC, I'm probably wrong. It's got the valve, Mac valve to the body here. Double action again, nice chrome body. This is 12 years old, so it's a little bit tainted. You've got your dial again to the back. These are coming in at around 150. The Creos are coming in at 135. I'll leave a link in the description so you can look at these two brushes here. So you get a 0 0.2 with this and you get a 0 0.4 needle and nozzle setup. So you're getting two airbrush setups, you get two cups, you get the bigger cup and you get the smaller cup. A great brush will last you your career and these are without a doubt the easiest brushes to strip down and put back together. So they're a bit of a idiot proof brush really to strip down, put back together. You've got no dramas. That they're good to get on with. So that's the H&S. Then I can move you on to Iwata. Now, Iwata brushes across the board from the budget ones up to the very expensive ones, they are brilliant. They really are brilliant brushes. I've got five or six Iwatas. We're looking at the Iwata, which is the HPC Plus. Now this is a 0 0.3, so great for a beginner. Trigger response on our waters are 
brilliant they really are you've got your dialing bit to the back on this brush i think these are coming in around i've seen some second hand ones of these going for around 110 120 if you can get one second hand win-win but if you are buying brand new probably around 180 190 mark so they're quite tipping near the 200 mark but it is a brush that will last you years so for the price of say 200 max it's going to be with you for your whole career along with these as well these will be the same they'll be with you for your career so there's three brands for you <clears throat> an airbrush setup with a compressor them three brands any of them three brushes with an eye water compressor and you are good to go now if you are thinking of studio setup like a studio set up like this or you've got like an outbuilding like a shed and a lot of artists that use sheds converted sheds there is nothing wrong with that at all i've also got a converted shed which is studio two which i used to do my portraits in love it little eight by six shed lined and i've got the airline i've got a big compressor to the side of this studio because i'm using big spray guns and i'm painting bigger stuff as well I've got a big compressor. Now, if you can go for a big compressor outside in your studio, it's a win-win, guys, it really is. The small compressors are great, the little silent ones, but you, you're just permanently hearing kicking in, kicking in. You've permanently got that noise in the background, kicking in, kicking out, kicking in, kicking out. Even though they're silent, you still hear them running. The, the little fridge motors are going brrr, running. If you get a big compressor, mm, one that will run big spray guns, I mean, I've got a 150 litre tank one, and that 150 litre tank compressor was still cheaper than buying a brand new iWater Studio Jet at 350. I got the 150 litre one for about three four five and i've still got it now it's been a great compressor and it runs all the big guns 13 cfm output so it it's ideal for all the big spray guns now i've got that coming in on the studio on a air regulator here and then that branches off to an airbrush hookup so i can fire the big compressor up fill the 150 litre tank and i can be airbrushing in here all day on a tank of air and it's not kicking in, kicking out, kicking in, kicking out. So you're sitting in the quiet and you're enjoying your airbrush. So that's another setup that you can go down if you've got a studio outside. But if you're indoors, the little compressors, a decent little compressor will do you great guys, it really will. So I hope this has helped you out. Looking at these brands and things, yes, you can go down that route, but if you go down that route, I guarantee it, you will always be throwing money at it more and more and more you'll be just buying it one month buying it again buying it again and you'll just you'll end up spending the same amount of money than if you go down the dearer route if you go the cheap route these that i've got were mainly for reviews for the channel so i chin these out my own pocket but they work they're backup brushes if i'm out and about i'll stick them in my little wheel along with the eye water and they're just back up in case anything happened and say the eye water blew up it shouldn't but if it did i know i could finish the job off and get by with these so they're just a backup for me these ones and reviews for you guys to see what these are like because you get a lot of false reviews saying oh these are brilliant they are what they are they're cheap they get a bit of paint down but that's it you'll be frustrated painting with them so i hope it's helped you out don't forget click that subscribe press that notification guys and if you want a one-to-one -one class at a good price where you can come down to me for the day if you're in the essex area in the studio i'll take you through these cheap brushes and you'll you'll see what i'm on about on how poor they are and then I'll show you the next range of brushes with the eye water compressor. You can have a blast with that. And then I'll show you 
expensive brushes and you'll get to grips and have a feel there's nothing worse than buying something that you've not tried or tested and that's why I say it's good to go on a class it really is because it, airbrushing is not for everybody you may think you want to do it but then have a go at it you think oh no I can't get into that glad I went on a class though and didn't blow 400 pound on a setup and ended up flogging it on Facebook sales so yeah hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.